Vauxhall Mariva. This vehicle was bought back here by me and the Muppet in the corner. Hey. Um, as a crank no start. And we were told by the other garage that it came from. It's The story is so it was driving down the road um, and just cut out. Uh, cranked, but it would not start. Um, it was the AA came out and pulled the coil pack, which is under this cover off, and they said it had no spark. So they pulled the coil pack out and said it had no spark, and put it on the back of the wagon and dropped it off at a local garage. It was sat at that garage for over a week. And um, then I got a phone call asking if I'd go pick it up and have a look at it. The garage has told them that uh, the key does not start the car and the car is immobilised. Um, now, I got two keys when I picked the car up. One of them, wherever it went, is there, is clearly a copy of a cheap... Uh, with a cheap Chinesium case on it. You can feel it's just cheap. The buttons don't do anything. Um, I don't think it's even got half the electronics inside of it. It does turn the ignition, but won't start the car. That key, uh, when you put it in, does bring on the immobiliser light, and you can't start it. So that's not very useful. This key, however, put it in, turn it on, the immobiliser light, and there is a little light in the cluster over here goes off and the vehicle cranks and as far as i'm aware 90 percent of vehicles will not crank if there is a immobilizer issue because the ecu won't allow that to happen so first things first obviously confirm crank no start check that there is rpm signal which there was um check codes in the ecu and there was a few strange ones here and there for immobiliser um, but the one that really stood out was injectors open circuit all four so came over I would show you but copyright laws and auto data looked up on the uh, computer and the injectors this coil pack both O2 sensors and the air mass meter all share a common power. So came into this box here and a lot of these fuses here all are for um, different uh, parts of the ECU and, and what have you and they're just listed on the aftermarket drawings as ECU power because that is actually listed as ECU power when it's not, this fuse here is for the injectors and coil pack and everything else. Pulled that fuse, first fuse I pulled out, ironically, blown. Put a new fuse in, tried it, wouldn't start. Thought, okay, well, wasn't that then. Came back, rechecked the fuse, and noticed the fuse was blown again. So I thought, well, being a Vauxhall, and they're not being prone for coil packs at all, I thought, well, unplug the coil pack, which I did. Pulled the fuse, put a new one in, cranked it. Obviously, it didn't start because coil pack's not plugged in, but it didn't blow the fuse either. Plugged the old coil pack back in, cranked it, and it actually fired for a, about three revolutions. There was a bright blue spark inside that fuse, and it popped. That was it, dead. Uh, ordered a new coil pack, put the coil pack on, new fuse in. And there we have it. Running like it should. So, coil pack died shorted internally, started pulling too much power, 
or shorting back through the wiring harness which blew the fuse simple easy fix a uh, little bit of knowledge in a wiring diagram don't quite understand why we thought that was so difficult um, that's pretty easy diagnostics to be fair so if you have a Vauxhall petrol that's died on the side of the road and has no spark you might want to consider doing those sort of simple little checks fuses and uh, it could be something as simple as one component knocking a fuse out that drives many other components thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one